There's a lot of paracord fishing lure designs on the internet, and all of them are really simple to make. They just take about an inch paracord, uh, they tease the insides a little bit so they fray out, and they put them on a really short hook, unlike this long hook, um, and they basically make an oversized fly. Um, and a lot of them had good success with that. Um, however, I personally feel that it's not weighted, you can't really cast them far, and if you don't treat them like a fly, uh, it's pretty hard to fish with. So I've come up with a little different design. I weight mine, and they're very effective. And the reason they're effective is paracord has a very shiny, uh, silky string inside, and it reflects the light really well. And for those of you who are not familiar with what paracord is, it's actually parachute cord. They call this paracord 550. Uh, you can buy it pretty much anywhere today because there's a lot of people uh, that use it for crafts. Uh, it's kind of become popular in the prepper world because you can pull out these strings. Uh, you can you can make fishing string out of the string that's inside the paracord. Um, you can make bracelets out of these and then you got string and cord that you might need to survive. Uh, so this has kind of got a... Um, uh, a popularity uh, value of 10 so to speak and you can even buy this in your big box stores uh, and your big china marts now in the craft section but we're going to take about uh, an inch of this maybe a little more and we're going to make a lure out of it and we're going to make a lure that's weighted uh, so you're going to be able to cast this a lot further than the rest of the lures online and you can jig it a little better um, so again, this really isn't like a, like a prepper lure. This is a lure that you can make at home uh, that's really effective. Um, it's just something fun to do. So the first thing we're going to do is take some black paracord. And we're going to cut about, about an inch. And that seems to be about what everybody else is using online. We might cut a little more in an inch. And we can trim it up later. So just trim it like this. And then what you're going to find out is in the center of all paracord um, is more cord. And it's braided. That's what makes this paracord really strong. It's the same cord used on parachutes. And you pull it out like this. You can see there's more cord inside. And again, this cord inside is extremely shiny. Um, it's, it's, it's basically nylon. And it's very silky, very bright. And that makes it easy for the fish to see this lure in the water. So we're going to pull it out a little bit here. Kind of make the, the tail of this lure, so to speak. About that far. Then we're going to trim the front of it off. Just like that. So we're going to set that aside for now. And I, I like to use on my homemade lures, and I've referenced this in other videos, um, the types of weights that are not usable. They don't have this little duck bill on the back side but I don't have anything big, big enough with me today to uh, make this lure so we're going to use a, a duck bill weight and uh, we'll just trim off the duck bill when we're done. So we're going to start out by weighting the front of this hook by sticking it on here like this and then we're going to pinch it with a pair of pliers and trim off the duck bill. So I've pinched it on every pair of pliers. It's not too pretty yet but we'll take care of that. And we take a pair of wire cutters and just trim this bill off the back so you have more of a rounded head on the lure. And this is lead. Lead's really soft, so it's, it's really not a big deal to, to do this. So now we have a little lead ball on the end of our hook. And that's exactly what we want. Next, we're going to take this one-inch piece of paracord. And you want the hook to be kind of hidden in its tail. And we're going to tease this tail and fluff it out here in a second. But right now we're just going to feed this hook and you want to be careful and kind of hold on to these strings but you're going to feed the hook through the hole of the paracord because it is hollow once you pull these strings out and around the bottom. It's kind of tricky. And again you got to hold on to these strands because they'll come loose. And you're feeding it just like you would lure. And that's what you want right there. Okay. Then the next thing you want to do is heat this front up with a lighter, which will keep it from fraying. So we're going to take a lighter. And paracord is, um, it's nylon. So you're just going to kind of melt the end just like you would a, a, a piece of rope to keep it from untangling. So we're going to go back and forth like this, get it kind of hot. There we go. 
and you can see it kind of melts it all together. Then we'll tease it here with our fingers, kind of mash it together, pull it back up, okay? Next, you're gonna you're gonna kind of lasso this together. You can take some thread and uh, and tie around here to kind of keep it together. Uh, but I like to use the paracord. And the reason I like to use the paracord is the paracord doesn't rot. Uh, it'll be around forever. It doesn't mold. Um, this lure will last a very long time. So I like to just pull some of the thread out of the paracord itself, just like this. And that's what we're going to use to to knot all this together. So just pull it out like that. Trim us off a piece. Okay, then we're just going to wrap it right around here. Okay, we'll go around a few times. Then we'll just tie a knot in this and button it up. Okay, now we have the knot uh, already tied. We'll just take our scissors and we'll trim this up a little bit. And that's going to keep this end from fraying and it also cinches it down on the hook to hold a little bit tighter. Now you could take some super glue and uh, and put down inside there if you want to. Uh, it's probably not a bad idea and that's what we're going to do. Uh, but technically everybody always gets concerned that, that this is loosed on the shaft of the hook and they're always afraid they're going to lose it if they catch a fish. And that's not true because when the fish gets caught by the hook, this stuff doesn't matter. It can slip back and forth. And the fish is going to be held by the hook and in in where you tie your knot on the, on the end of the, the eye of the hook. So I don't know why people get worried about that. It seems kind of silly. Okay, so I've just folded the, uh, the tail back. And we're just going to take some super glue and reach down in there and just put a little bit. Not much. Just a dot and let it wick it up and let it dry. Okay, now that the super glue is dried... We need to tease these strings to uh, make them flare out. So you can do that a couple different ways. Um, you can just take your, your fingers and just kind of keep pulling on them. Uh, you can take a needle and reach in there, but you're just wanting to, just wanting to unravel them so they, they fray out and make a nice fluffy tail. And that's going to give you the action you need in the water to attract a fish. So we'll just do that, keep teasing them and unraveling them, and we'll just make a bushy tail. It's fluffed out now, and the jig, just like this, you could use this, and you will catch fish on this. You're specifically going to catch panfish, uh, maybe even a few bass. And essentially what you have done is you've created nothing more than a, a crappie um, uh, type lure, such as the ones you can buy, or panfish lures, and you know how effective these are. The tails get wet, and they, they lose their fluffiness, but they come back down into a point when you're fishing with them, and they're really effective. And that's exactly what this one's going to do. Uh, however, since the tail's nylon, it'll actually stay a little more fluffier um, than this really soft cotton-tailed one uh, actually will. And these will actually rot uh, and, and be junk after a few years if you keep them wet. These, on the other hand, are, are nylon, and they're going to last a long, long time. Um, but if you're like me, you're probably going to hang them in a tree anyhow, so it's not, not a great loss if you make them yourself. Something else you can do is take the weight in the front and uh, get you some nail polish and um, brighten them up a little bit, maybe make them yellow, put some eyes on it if you wanted to, get creative, uh, use some orange, uh, but you want something that just kind of pops. Sometimes I take the hook and I'll put a red uh, red coat right above the barb and around it um, because when you're, when you're fishing up high, uh, the fish can see that red color. Of course, the deeper you go, uh, the fish start losing the color, but if they see a little bit of red on a lure, uh, they think the fish is wounded and it might be easy uh, food for them so that they'll go after it sometimes uh, when they won't when there's no red on them so that's all there is to it it's a real simple real cheap lure they work really well um, there's virtually no money in this i mean i don't know if there's 20 cents in this particular lure uh, but go out make some have some fun catch some fish rip some lips